Welcome back. Part four, chapter 11. This is the last part of chapter 11. We're going to look at some lookups. I'm going to go over the lookup page. We're going to look some information up here from our table. So we have different stores and the sales for each week ending. And what we're going to do is we're going to click here in D2 and we want to have a row number returned because we're going to use our row numbers and our column numbers in another formula. So we're going to build it out slowly, put it all together, see what it looks like. Ultimately, what I want to do is I want to have what row is a store for whatever store I put in B2. Right now, it's 235. And if I look down the list, here's the array. If I look down the list, not the first one, but it's the second position. So I want to return a two here for my row number. Here's going to be my column number. The columns, because they're, they're dates across the top, I want to return what column is 629 in. Well, if I look 615, 622, 629, third column. So I want a two here and a three here. Now, how am I going to get that accomplished? Well, let's go to the lookup. We're going to use something called an X match. So we go X match. What do we want to look up? Well, we're going to look up the store. Where are we going to look up the store? Well, we're going to look that up in the store list. That's it. I can see my answer says two here. When I click OK, we're there. Let's do that again for the row. Look up all the way to the bottom. X match. What are we looking up? We're looking up the date. Where are we going to find the dates? We're going to go right across the headers here with all the dates. Now notice that we started in column C. That's important. I didn't grab the whole table. I'm just grabbing the dates. And I'll say OK. And it's in the third position. Now, why is this important? Well, because when I use an index function, I don't want to grab the whole table and, and use this. I'm just going to grab the area for my array of where it's important, where my information is, because that's where my column starts. So now I'm going to put them together. If you remember from your math class, if you had like pre-calc, there's something called the Cartesian system. Or if you've used the multiplication table, six times six, you go over to the six and you go down six where they meet. That's the answer. So here we have the second row right here. So here's the second row and we have the third column. Here's the third column where they meet right here. That should be the answer. So let's see if we can get that accomplished by using an index. So we're going to come down here to index. It says I want an array and then I want a row number and a column number. And I'm going to say, yes, that's the one I want to use. So what's my array? That's going to be my answers here below my column. What row do I want to return? Well, Here's my row number. What column do I want to return? And here's my column number. Now, if I've done everything right, it should be 51,275. And if I come over, second one over, third one right here, it's a match. My formula works really well. My IT author wants you to then come in here and delete your information and start again. Okay, that sounds great, but let me show you an easier way. I'm going to go over to my home tab. Now, right here on my clipboard, I can open this up and now I have my clipboard. Let me show you an option that I always put on mine. And that is show clipboard when control C is pressed twice. Why? Let me show you how this works. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to highlight everything except for the equal sign. Control C C opens up my clipboard and I can see I have this information pasted in. Now I'm going to hit escape. I'll grab my row number, highlight everything except for the equal sign. I only need to press control C one time now because my clipboard's already open. Control C, hit escape. Why? Because I don't want to be in that copy mode anymore. Now again, the author wants you to go back in here, start a new formula, and then manually enter the match functions. That's great. But since we already have the information, I'm going to make it easy on myself and let's make it easy on you. My IT lab will probably have you type it, but I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to double click on the D2 and that's the first one. OK, so that's the one in that's looking up the stuff for B2 and so B3. So I know this is my row number and I'm going to click on that. And look, it just put it right in my formula. I love that. I'm going to double click D3, click on that second match. Boom way faster than typing. Click OK and now hit enter. Why would I want to do this? Okay, that's a great question. So here's this long formula. We already had it working. Why would I want to put it in here? Well, let's say you don't have this here. I'm going to delete it. My formula still works. Okay, so I'm going to 
put that stuff back just so it matches and you don't get it wrong when you turn it in. It's there. Next, I want to know what location is my answer in? Where in my table is 51275? And I can look here, it says E8. So that's the location. I can find that by going to the formulas. In my lookup, I want this address formula here. And it's going to give me the address of the cell I used. So to do this, I'm going to go row number. Now this adds two because it starts in the second position. And I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to use something that's the row formula. We've done this before. Row, open parenthesis, and I'm going to click in A6. Close the parenthesis. Now I'm going to pick the column. So I'm going to go here. Column is three plus, we're going to use the column, open parenthesis. I'm going to click in B6 for the column, close the parenthesis. Now the next argument here, I'm going to hit tab, has four options. Option one is by default. So I'll say one, it makes, if you look here, everything is locked in. It's an absolute value. If I go back, use a two, it unlocks the column, keeps the row lock, so it's a mixed reference. I go back and I use a three in there. It locks the column, unlocks the row, but if I use a four, it keeps it relative. And that's what I want for this one. I want it to be relative, so I'll put a four in here and click OK. And E8, exactly where I said it was going to be. Next, we're going to use a function. It's called an indirect function. Let's change up our store number. So I'm going to go to B2 and type in 430. Click Enter. Now, before I do the indirect, let's create some range names. So here, I want the names to be here. And so for example, Lincoln, I want all this information for Lincoln. So when I click on the name range, Lincoln highlights all this. We're gonna do that by selecting from B7 all the way down to F11. Go to your name manager, and we're gonna say create from a section. Being that the names are on the left, that's what I want, and I'll say okay. Click over here in I7. We're gonna paste the list. So we're gonna say using a formula paste names, and paste list. Here's where it looks up the information. Here's the row information for each one. One thing I would like to point out is the names have an underline instead of a space. Remember, a name range cannot have a space. You'll get an error, so it puts an underline. And that's going to play an important part here in a moment. Let's go over here in G4. Let's type equals sum, open the parenthesis, now we're gonna use that indirect function that we talked about. So I'm gonna go find it here. Indirect says, what reference do I wanna reference? Well, I wanna reference the city that's found over here in B4. If I look up in my formula box, I have an open parenthesis, another open parenthesis, and a closed parenthesis. So when I click OK, I should get an error message. Mm -hmm. And it says, yes, you need to have one more parenthesis. And I say, yeah, go ahead and put it in there. Now what it says is for Omaha, it adds everything up, and this should be my total. And I can double check that by just highlighting everything, going down to my taskbar down here, and I can see the sum says 197,825. So it works perfectly. Now let's go over to B2 and change that to 235. My information updates. But what happens if I type in 215? I get a reference error. Why? because my names here have spaces, my range names do not have spaces. So how do I fix that? For now, until somebody programs Excel differently, I can just go ahead and put in underlines in all the ones that have a space. So I'll just replace the space with an underline. And one last time. Now, my monthly total works. Next, let's document our formulas that we used. This one's really easy, pretty cool. We're gonna come over here to J2, in our lookup formulas, we want to use something that's called formula to text right here. And all this does is it just says, what formula did you use in whatever cell reference? And I'm gonna say, let's start with D2 and click OK. And it says I used an X match. Now, because it's relative, I can just copy it down one and I have that X match here for my column. Now I'm gonna come down to G2 and I'm going to use that formula to text again by going equals. And I can just start typing form. And there it is. Tab. Grab that first one over here in G2. Enter. There's my index. If I grab the fill handle, drag it down a couple spaces, I have my address formula and my indirect. I'm going to click in A1 now. 
I'm going to group my sheets. So select all, go up to my page layout, and let's say automatic page width. They're not too long, so that would be great. That way I don't have any columns that are going off to another page. I'm going to put my footer in. So page layout, yes, fit to one page, margins. That's okay. Do I want to change? Yeah, maybe. Let's go landscape. I like landscape. Header footer, custom footer. Always have this in here. This should be the last one. Center section, that's the sheet name. And the right section, that's the Excel file. Should be chapter 11 underscore your last name. Click OK. Always like to do a print preview. Let's just make sure it looks good. One, two, three, four, five. Click export PDF to XPS. Options. Entire workbook. OK. Publish. I will also do a quick save on my file. Now I can group them, put them in my zip folder, upload them to Moodle. We're done with the book. Congratulations, guys. We'll see you for the Moss exam or for the alternative exam, whichever one you signed up for. All right, that's it for me. Cheers.